not the end game, guys. We're not supposed to be here. <laughs> so, uh, you're probably wondering how I got here. Well, this Minecraft thing came out a while back during the last D&D Direct, which was dropped during the first minute of the premiere and then was immediately followed up with the thing everyone was actually there to see, the infinitely more successful D&D movie. Besides the trailer, the game got, like, no attention on YouTube, so there's a good chance most of you have no idea how it even plays, me included. Then, just to quickly recap the D&D community's side, we got a few Minecraft mobs as creatures in our game. Which is cool, I guess, but, you know, I did this three years ago, and as the Minecraft D&D OG, I'm kinda surprised I wasn't hit up to join the designing team. It's also funny that the Ender Dragon broke D&D's record for the strongest official D&D creature printed with the least amount of lore. Should've got MatPat on standby to explain things for him, maybe they could've added an extra paragraph or two. Anyway, the Minecraft community couldn't give two dirt blocks over any of this, and it all kind of just felt like an afterthought to fill up time for the D&D Direct. Well, curiosity got the better of me, so I re-downloaded Minecraft, realized I forgot my account information, bought Minecraft again, and spent the next half hour figuring out how Bedrock Edition worked. Floppy disks? Where are we? What age of technology is this? Oh no! That puts everything in perspective. I guess the computer too, but the floppies. The floppies, man. Oh god, so there he is! a more individual sort of experience <laughs> would be a good way of showing you the ropes. Just okay. take a seat whenever you feel like getting started. I've got snacks that should last us until the end of the universe, so help yourself to those two. Do you? This pizza's almost done, like that's a fourth of the pizza missing. Who ate this before I showed up? Why are people snacking before the game even began? So the team that made this were Everbloom Games, who've been designing a bunch of oddball Minecraft Marketplace stuff for the last three years now. They started with this thing called a Nightmare in Candy World, which from the looks of it was a baby's first adventure map sized project, aka endless waves of enemies to kill and command blocks shooting text into the Chat. Later on, they started exploring with more fantasy-styled stuff like Be a Dragon, Dragon Pets, Dragon Bosses, Dragon Park, and I guess D&D's company wandered into their horde of dragon content and realized just how easy it'd be to pay them to make a map. So now we're here. Good to go? What the? Okay, so okay. first things first, let's choose your class. I've got the basics already written up for mm -hmm. a few of them, so you only need to worry about picking one. Shad was pretty sure they wanted me as a wizard, so I obliged and took the first chance I could get to completely ruin my stats. If you're familiar with D&D, then ability scores in this game are gonna give you a migraine because they've essentially all been Minecraftified. Strength boosts your damage for everything, which is kinda good for every class because everyone's doing damage constantly. Dexterity lets you attack faster, pairing great with the auto attack every class gets. Con is boring and just makes you hardier, which isn't important at all because healing potions are super cheap and god gamers don't get hit in the first place. Intelligence is kinda bonkers for the wizard at least, because lower cooldowns mean you can spam your overpowered spells way more. Wisdom is the same thing, but for everything that isn't a spell, so basically useless for us. And charisma lets you make critical hits more often. I was wondering why charisma was so low for the wizard to start, and it wouldn't be until after we began the game that I'd realize why. You see, the wizard is all about slow spell cooldowns, big AoE explosions, and a bunch of utility magic. Half your kit doesn't even proc critical hits, and sure, critting on a fireball would be super cool, but upgrading your intelligence and just casting more fireballs is just so much better. Anyway, I didn't know or care about that, so we wound up just pumping ourselves full of charisma and began the journey. Despite this, it all starts with something as mundane as fetching groceries for your parents. Fetching groceries? What? We're starting with fetching groceries? We open on Nashkel a village on the northern slopes of the Cloud Peaks. The late spring rains have abated, making the trek across town to deliver a commission for your father Everyone's at least spawning a bit in. less muddy. As you make your way back along the main street, though, it is hard not to notice that your otherwise quiet home is riddled with strained, whispered conversations. Here we go! Ah, there you are. Put the food on the table and come talk to me. There's something we need to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> I almost killed them all with my crazy wizard magic. That could have been dangerous. Who knows what what power my wizard magic has. Listen, you've heard about the people going missing. I'm not going to sugarcoat this, but the whole Kelsit family is gone now. Neri They're found their gone. farm empty this morning without even a sign of struggle. Oh, God. This is asking a lot, and I've got a feeling your mother's going to kill me after I say this. Then don't say it. 
Then say it. But I need you to go I'm the adventurer. with Andandravair and ask for his help. The story of Minecraft D&D is kind of the main enjoyment of the game in my opinion, as in reality, the skills and abilities you get are significantly less than any combat tricks available in vanilla Minecraft. I found myself kiting enemies around throughout the game, or flat out ignoring a lot of them that were kind of just in the way to buy more time in the story. It also didn't help that all my spells had crazy range too, making these cheese tactics even easier to pull off. And although we start as a simple villager delivering some groceries, we wind up in a dangerous quest to talk with a friendly local dragon about about some missing person cases. Magic Missile wound up being the MVP of the run, nearly one-shotting everything it would ever hit, and Magic Barrier was kinda useless to start because, at least for now, offense was our best defense. Keep in mind that this spell makes you immortal for a bit, we'll get back to how useful that is later. You gain access to new weapons, armors, and spells all at around the same times through the game, making it pretty easy to tell how much longer you have until you run out of content and the game ends. I gotta be able to jump that. I'm free! Let's see what where we can get that we're not supposed to be. Oh wait, here? That's easier. There we go, okay. I'm the game breaker, I break the games. This is the plain simple strategy. Endlessly known for doing this kind of stupid nonsense. I honestly hope that we find something fun that just completely sequence. What the, what is that? The, the, the dungeon master didn't plan for this. So in my glory days of Minecraft map making, one of the first things I'd always do would be to make sure players didn't have an easy time clipping out of bounds and ruining the immersion for themselves. So you can understand my bewilderment as at literally the first place I try, I escape out of bounds. Now you'd think I'm being too harsh by laughing at the lack of map barriers, but two hours later in our playthrough, there's a massive staircase with the most obnoxious invisible barrier I've ever seen in a Minecraft map. It completely prevents you from falling to your death, which I just find is way more offensive. What? Hold up, what is this? What the? Treasure? There's so much treasure down- Oh god. The cave noises. Where are we guys? Where are we? I'm also sorry if we're going to have to like restart this because I sequence broke into an area I'm not supposed to be in yet. Dragon most likely? Yeah, of course a dragon would have a massive pile of gold here. That much is obvious. Is this like the end of the game? That would be so funny if we just w instantly found ourselves at the end of the entire map. I hope I died to something incredibly overleveled. That would be so deserved right now. Investigate the sounds. This has turned into a horror game. So there's nothing in the cave. I'm assuming because we didn't trigger what was supposed to be in there because we don't have the quest for it. That or it just spawned in now because we got to the front of the cave. Check now. Yeah, yeah, let's let's just see what's inside now. Oh god. Oh no. Oh no, oh no. I think it's here. Chat, we're not ready. We're not ready for this. Oh. Exactly! Oh, I'm not supposed to be here! I'm not supposed to be here. Why? Why do you do this? Release me! We're at the end game, guys. We're not supposed to be here. <laughs> After walking back into the cave, we find the gold dragon we came to talk to having his soul expelled from his body. This mage guy who looks like he drinks Elmer's glue traps the dragon's soul in a gold coin and tosses it aside. Then we just happen to walk in as the coin rolls in front of us. The coin's magic is super volatile though and merges the dragon's soul to our body. Then it apparently warps us right outside of town for some reason, just in time to let us see the entire place burned down to the ground by Elmer Glue Mage's henchmen. We kill them all, and the dragon in our head tells us we need to find someone smart enough to get him out. Our character's family was also kind of kidnapped as well, so off to Candlekeep we go, the information capital of the world. We're going that way, and we got a fireball. Explosion! We that's cool. Only an 11 second cooldown too? That's shorter than Magic Missile. That's pretty wild. Magic Missile, go! Use it! Let's throw another fireball! Dungeons and Dragons powers activate! <laughs> oh, that's a critical hit fireball. That's crazy. What business have you here, child? Uh, I need a scholar. I wish to speak with one of the researchers. <laughs> you and everyone else. Do you have an appointment or a letter of introduction? Can I lie with my super Riz? Yes. No! I am to speak with avowed Tenbury. Keep this up, and I will make sure that the guards remove you from the city so that none oh, of the no. avowed ever hear from you, except perhaps while doing a census on criminal activity. 
Thank you for your time. My pleasure. So I need a way this to get in here. This is unacceptable. We must find someone to assist us, and soon. I can only imagine what those monsters are doing with my body, and already I chafe at being confined to yours. We might have to find another dubiously legal way around this problem. Mm. Actually, I remember passing a sewer grate earlier. If there are sewers for this outer area, then they surely have some for the inner ward. So, you want me to break into a sewer, <laughs> sneak through Ogma knows what kind of filth, and then break into the inner ward to yep. what? Kidnap or threaten a scholar into helping us? Exactly! That was easy. Uh, this is what living in a city means? Time to kill some oh, sewer no, rats and so weird slime filth. creatures. Where are the monsters at? Wait, look at that. On the ground. Where? There's nothing on the ground. Precisely. What? Helpful. The rest of this place is a riot of grime and muck, child, yet this path is almost spotless. Oh! My entire horde that a gelatinous cube has come this way. So smart! A what now? An I never would have thought about that. that. It's places like this. Some people and more intelligent creatures keep them That's as so cool. guardians and janitors. <laughs> that might get us out of the sewers and into the cleaner part we saw earlier. Just don't let the Oh, it's, it's getting annihilated. Please. I kind of want to be sucked up. Let's see what happens if I get sucked. That's it. Suck me. Oh, ah, ah. This way. Oh. Oh, nice place. Oh. Thank you. Unfortunately for you, oh, no. chances are that you will only see it as you are taken away to a prison How do they cell. know I was down there? Yes, if we want to win our freedom and get help with the whole dragon in our head situation, we gotta help this tiefling guy out. He wants us to break into a guy named Adro's tower and either help him out if he's in trouble or steal his life's work if he's MIA. Candlekeep kind of has us wrapped around their finger at this point though, so with nowhere better to go for help, we begin the journey. Oh, what are you? You should not have come here. You've certainly made a mess of things, and now our lord is upset. Yes, though it has been entertaining to watch you struggle. What is that voice actor? Sounds completely different from everyone else. <laughs> oh, oh, I got spun around. I'm drinking a speed potion, speed potion, and a magic potion. Oh, you're throwing rocks at me? There's, how are you throwing rocks? There's no rocks in this room. Ow! The noise that you make are so weird. Oh, that did a lot of damage. Oh, whoa. I annihilated you. Give, it, give me the crystal. Fireball. Uh, what now? Can I please have what I'm here for? Or am I stuck? The campaign broke? Why? <laughs> like, if this actually glitched, we need to restart from the beginning, which is certainly not happening. Right click, right click. Pressing E on everything, too. Nothing here. No. Oh! This one? That is so bad. So basically, the cultists in the tower were a part of the Devil Division. They were preparing to rally forces and fight off a quote unquote impending calamity, whatever that could be. Anyway, the calamity in the moment was me, and they couldn't fend me off, so I doubt they'd have the strength to stop whatever the first one was gonna be. The Elmer's Glue Wizard breaks in last second, though, and thinks we're helping him, so he steals a crystal item the Devil Worshippers were using to commune with the Outer Planes, and spares us by mercifully throwing us out the window. Thankfully, there's two blocks of Minecraft water below us, and we survive to crawl back to Candlekeep and share the story. Tiefling guy keys us in on where we can find a rod capable of returning things to their natural states, aka putting Ver, the gold dragon's soul, back into his body and out of ours. Apparently a storm giant has it, and they can be found chilling up and around Icewind Dale. And yep, if you know your maps, that's a 1,200 mile journey on a boat and a good 10 days at sea. So, super rookie streamer mistake, but I thought 30 gigabytes would be enough space to record the final half of this game, and it definitely wasn't, and crashed the stream and corrupted two hours of footage. Thankfully, YouTube archived the whole thing, with the only problem now being that all the audio is on the same track. But you're not the editor who's gonna have to suffer through this, I am. <coughs> anyway. Icewind Dale was pretty uninteresting, but we find a shop to upgrade our gear to tier 3. Ignore the fact that I finally found the upgrade store in Candlekeep, bought all the upgrades at the end of the 
the city's quest line and immediately unlock the next tier in Icewind Dale. We got some hints as to the storm giant's whereabouts and went on our way. When we eventually found the giant, they said they'd give us the rod if we saved their druid friends from Alcatraz. This whole dungeon was essentially a taste for explaining the whole calamity situation the devils were talking about earlier. Basically, demonic portals are opening up everywhere, and devils hate demons, so they've come to stop them. Alcatraz was basically an entire dungeon to hit home that fact, and if you're confused as to what this whole devil and demon conundrum has to do with the plot we started with, your guess is as good as mine. To explain what's been happening at Alcatraz for the last month or so, the warden wrote a 32-page book in the dungeon that explains everything. So, cracking that bad boy open, we learn that... It exp oh, good God. Don't hit me again. Uh, goodbye. Okay, back to it. Things into rebel... Okay. This last entry is from a little over a week ago, you notice. This happened recently. Okay, so we're like at the precipice of how bad this can realistically get. And also, every guard is now dead, probably. Oh, by the way, at the start of the dungeon, we also finally got a chance to play around with our new Flame Shield spell. Which is hilariously good at killing all the fodder enemies in the game, because every time we get hit, an aura of fire damages everything around us. That, coupled with Fireball, makes quick work of basically any non-boss enemy. The druid we came to save hasn't eaten in a week, won't go anywhere if they don't have their spellcasting focus, and definitely won't move a muscle unless every demon in the dungeon is killed. So off we go. Get out of the way! I'm done! Die! I'm back. Oh, my focus. Excellent. Have you cleared the path to the portal? Yes, very much so. All of the demons have been killed. Oh, you even took care of that big uh, bat-like thing? That one looked particularly huh? menacing. If I'm being entirely honest, I literally peed myself when it stopped by to try to get into my cell. This is something else entirely. See? What other bat-like demons so do I know? It oh, a Baylor. Oh, so no. Well, if that thing's still hanging around, then it will probably rip me to shreds the moment I try to seal the portal. Yeah, I think a Baylor is definitely going to rip you to shreds. Wow, I've never actually been up quite this high. Is this what it's like for you? Viewing the world from above while Ooh. flying, everything spread out so endlessly. It was. Any chance <laughs> those specks are dangerous or harming anything in the I area? I see you up there. What? What are you? What are? You? Oh, we saw this thing. We saw this thing in the the first room of the game. Sense. Kind of a funny voice, though. Yeah, it's always fun that monsters that have no intention to let you live will talk it in any capacity. Like that's just like the like the like the humanity in creatures just needing a little bit of socialization time, even when they're about to murder something <laughs> or somebody. What's wrong with you? Fight me! <laughs> okay. Why do you sound like you're wheezing as I'm hitting you? Where are you going? Excuse me? Oh! You missed. Ooh, you missed again. Oh, okay. Okay, just like two more magic missiles and he's dead. I'm going in with the magic infinity barrier. You can't even hurt me now. Yeah, keep wheezing. Oh, he's hurting me now, he's hurting me. I can't see! I can't see! It's fine, though. You're still dead. You need, like, an inhaler, man. Even if you strike me down and destroy my body here, I will simply reform in the abyss. And when I do, and when my master calls... This is really <laughs> emotional. Nothing will stop me. I didn't know this guy at all, and this is the saddest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> well, 
that just happened? The sad thing is that by the time that he comes back, we'll have separated from the dragon, and now he'll have to actually fight a real dragon. And my soul won't matter because I'm just a boring old human, you know? After saving the druid, the storm giant gives us the rod and we're left to hunt down some dwarves to figure out where the Elmer's glue wizard is hiding. They tell us we should go to a place called Mithril Hall and we do a little bit of meddling around on our way there. Treasure. This was, oh, a mimic. Why is there a mimic here? It's right next to the dwarves. Head off of me. Be original. There's one thing I'll always respect. It's orderly lines. I'm staying behind a line. Yeah, I think um, guy saying next <laughs> should be nominated for the game awards. I'm almost there. Here we go. Here we go. Next. Move forward. Next. Uh, is it my turn? I guess. I guess I'm I'm up next. What what do I do? Oh! What's going on? What are you doing? We're trapped. What's up, happening? Captain. Being captured by strong people capable of OP magic that just lets them immediately know where you are and what creature type you are seems to be a recurring thing in this adventure. First it was Candlekeep Sewers and now Divination Wards are being placed in the waiting line of Mithril Hall. After being interrogated for the second time this journey, we enlist in the help of the dwarves who say the glue wizard and the dragon's body can be found in the Underdark. They'll help us pull off a siege to break in, but only if we prove our worth by fighting off three of their strongest fighters. Fire Shield. Oh, they kind of do a lot of damage. Okay, I can't actually do that. Okay, you're just you just got annihilated. This would also be the first fight. We really get to try out our new spell, Immolation. Immolation was kind of weird because as I used it later on, it looked like I had to channel the spell while burning people alive. But during this fight, I canceled out of it somehow while it kept doing tick damage. Kind of a weird one, and I'm not a fan that it makes using your little auto attack wizard beam obsolete. Because by the time it's finished casting, all your other magic is back online anyway. Oh god. Magic barrier. What? No. It was a tie! It was a tie! I won though, right? I'll send word along I won, fair and stress. square. After expertly defeating our opponents without even a lick of damage, the dwarves line up to march into the Underdark with us right behind. Ooh. This music's kind of nice. A little calming. Ooh. This is kind of cool. Oh, the atmosphere is so nice here. Okay, I really like this, actually. <laughs> they are not too different from forests on the surface in that regard. Just don't try to eat them, is all. Wait, why can't other things eat them, but I can't? This place is kind of crazy, though. Is that an upside-down tower? Look at how those cubes are spinning up there. This is really cool. I'm just, I'm just looking around. This might be one of my favorite regions so far. Dwarf Outpost. I don't think it's a name warranting of creating an entire board for it, but it's certainly a name. The Glue Drinker's castle is ripe for the sieging, so the dwarves take up arms and rush down one path while we infiltrate another. I'm using my speed potion. This is why the speed potions exist. Huh. More speed. Go, 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 go. Huh. What are you doing? Kill them! No! They're killing the Telltale Games Minecraft Story Mode NPC. Walking into a sacrifice in progress, killing everyone with a health bar, and freeing a bunch of wannabe sacrifices, Blue Drinker shows back up and begs us to leave them alone with a small threat of killing our family if we don't. We're taking over. I'm also- I'm the third soul. I'm the third mind inside of Katra. And I'm saying we fight. Cannot be sure that your parents are even still alive, Katra, Exactly, we, we can't be for sure. We we body. don't know. We also don't care because we talked to them for like a, a like a minute at the start of the game. Twenty five insight. Okay, now I really want to play this again, but with insight. I can't even beat this. Fight! 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 Okay, they're all dead, and now you're being immolated. Pew, 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 pew. Immolation. How? 
How long does this spell take to use? Do I have to hold it to immolate? That's kind of awful. And this battle would be the beginning of the end for the story, and basically every fight we get into after this would be a boss battle. Thankfully, our magic barrier spell makes us invulnerable to damage for almost 15 seconds at this point, which basically nullifies all their hardest hitting moves. And with Magic Missile breaking chunks off enemies every time it's cast, it seemed like we couldn't lose. Maybe my cockiness nearly got me killed in a few situations where there'd normally never be a chance for me to die, but hey, I just call that good television. With Elmer properly flattened like a pancake, we walked by and found where the dragon's body was hiding. They got this guy covered in a weird octopus creature, and in order to use the rod to put Vare's soul back inside, we need to beat him up first. Ow! <laughs> what are you shooting? What are you spitting? Don't do that, that's disgusting. More speed. I need more speed. Oh, one more magic missile and it's over! It's not actually. He has a little bit more HP than that. Now, Contra, use the rod now. This is like Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Hit him with the final slice. Oh, kill the weird looking monster creature. <laughs> the cinematic is kind of goofy looking. There? There, are you okay? I mean, he did just re-inhabit a near-dead body, so... Pancake Dude slithers back out from nowhere and causes one last bit of misery before finally letting his glue-drinking self die, turning our big dragon boy into a raging redditor and having him jump off the building in anger. So yeah, apparently he's been infected with the terrifying knowledge that an ancient evil demon known as Demogorgon is gonna emerge and destroy the planet. When Vera realized we were nearby, though, the dragon immediately took the chance to jump right back into our mind to escape his own, dragging his paint thoughts with him and basically scarring us with an equal amount of traumatizing memories. It was easier to deal with if two people were sharing in the pain though, so until Vare's mind could be fortified to stand on its own, he's sort of stuck in our head again. We're finally given an actual reason to care about all the devil and demon stuff going on, and while the dwarves worked to figure out how to protect the dragon's mind from exploding from all the scary thoughts, it became our job to take this sick new sword the dwarves crafted for us and find someone who could enchant it with godly magic capable of killing Demogorgon. We later get in contact with the Candlekeep Tiefling, who points us to an elven village that has someone who can help. Hello there! Haven't had a visitor in a while. My name is Sunamati. I'm the guardian of the She sounds like the type so that would be like super happy and uplifting and who then like you be? slit your throat, you know? My Faerun is about to be invaded by an army of demons led by Why does that horse sound exactly oh, like a Pona? Yes. Is that like a what about that? copyright I'm free nasty sound effect? No chance that you're willing to help just because the land is in peril and both you and your goddess don't want to see us all perish in flame and madness? <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. No chance at all. Nice try, Very though. logical creature. Uh, to prove we're worthy of ultimate holy power, we're told to do the light mirror puzzles from Ocarina of Time, all while Vare goes through his tragic backstory. The dude who usurped the rulers of two places and forced their people into peace, then later ignored their pleas for help when a dragon came by to destroy their homes. And what makes it worse is that by the end, we learn that when his mind was overrun with fear of Demogorgon, Vare knowingly abused us by jumping into our mind to alleviate his own pain. You told me it was an accident! I... I was not thinking clearly. You knew that it would hurt me, c could shatter my mind, and you did it anyway! I was afraid and in so much pain, Katra. I'm sorry, but... B but what? But you're not as important as I am? But you didn't need a say in this! You didn't even think to ask before you decided to risk my life, my sanity! I said that I was not thinking clearly. Really? What I saw seemed clear enough. That wasn't just selfish and dangerous, Vair. I came to help you when I could have left you in the caverns to die! And you forced me to see something that even you couldn't handle! But I could handle it, because I'm at least a level 8 wizard now. I thought that you could handle it, with the both of us sharing- Oh, really? Because you sounded pretty uncertain in that memory, and I heard a few solid arguments about keeping that nightmare to yourself! Yeah, they're both really gonna need some therapy after this. I want you to be quiet, okay? Just for a little bit. Let me pretend at least for a little while that I don't have some invader in my head that's just using me for their own ends. 
As you wish. That was certainly dramatic. But I think that Fireball. I've seen enough. So yeah, our character gets super mad at Bear, and when we finally get back to the dwarves, we shove him back into his fortified body and leave him to sulk while the rest of the Suicide Squad's worth of overpowered side characters show up to beat some sense into Demogorgon. We. This is where Demogorgon is? All my friends. All of them who Head kinda magic. hate me a little. Oh. There he is! Demogorgon! Oh no! Hmm, the surface world. We have not seen this it can in talk. some time. Not since our imprisonment in Watcher's Keep on you. I would not count that dungeon as the surface. Then I have lost track of how many centuries have passed since we last saw green or felt the material world stone beneath our talons. You forget the Underdark, Arthradia, and that arrogant drow sorcerer who allowed us through to his city. <sighs> Such a brief journey, and without even a glimpse of sunlight. The battle, though. <sighs> Yeah, you're not even getting the sunlight here. It's like midnight now. You do not look like you could provide such entertainment, even all together. Indeed not. How about instead you just go back to the abyss where you came from? Or lie down and let us slay you if you need some help getting home? We won't even charge you for the trip. Ah, oh, we tried, Amel. So we did. And how reasonable we were. Yes. At least this way, we do not have to wait before we start the killing. Here we go. Magic barrier. Let's get this started. You shall all suffer in this. Immolation. I actually don't think Immolation's that strong. I should just spam Magic Missile. This is also the final fight of the main storyline, and since I was already pretty comfortable with my current spell lineup, I kinda glossed over the new one we got, Hold Monster. I'm really unsure what this was supposed to do, because when I used it on Demogorgon, they were still moving, so no clue what was going on there. I'm not really sure what this spells up, but here goes nothing! <laughs> this is literally Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. We got all the gamers helping. He's getting whooped. Bow before the Lord of the New World. Third person action. Oh, ow, 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 ow. By the grace of Felune, I shall slay thee. <laughs> that noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh. God. And even though Vera was super weak from being puppeteered by an octopus monster for a month and tormented by nightmares, the guy flies in to deliver the killing blow. Magic Missile is the best spell in Dungeons and Dragons! We win! It never misses. But I will be having nightmares about that for probably the rest of my life. Have a good life, everyone. <laughs> Have a good life. But you also cannot help remembering how hurt you felt, how betrayed, when you learned of Vaier's choice to endanger you. Still watching, Endan Dravaeir awaits your answer. And you'll always have me there to listen to you too, okay? Thank you, Katra. It is strange. I have never had a companion for more than a few days, not in my entire life. Now, though, it is hard to imagine living without one. Might as well get some use out of this thing while it lasts. <laughs> and then I stab myself with it. Overall, the game was pretty fun. It's a great way to get people into the lore of the Forgotten Realms without lore-splaining like a nerd or forcing them to learn D&D. Combat was fine, but I'm sure it becomes more fun with friends. Story got way more interesting towards the end as the adventure finally started to let us know what was actually going on. And the dynamic between the main character Katra and Ver was pretty dynamic and full of energy. I definitely don't think you should drop almost $15 worth of mine coins to play it, though you could buy an entire cart's worth of discounted Steam games with that much money. But hopefully this video was informative enough to get your fill for what the game had in store so you don't have to.
And hey, if you're looking for more games collabing with D&D, glad to say I found another. Because Dragonair Silent Gods is an open world RPG born straight from D&D's inspirations. And the first phase of their new content launch is packed full with new collaboration content straight from D&D, the world's most popular tabletop roleplaying game. The rebellious drow, Dritz Doerden, and his cute deadly murder panther dropped as characters you can add to your roster, coupled with full storylines to explore with them. Dice rolls for checks, creative character designs, and grid-based battles are the name of the game, making tabletop players feel right at home the moment they join in. Tons of D&D themed content is already available, and players can expect to launch in already able to fight against the legendary demon commander, Urtu. Dragonair is also up on tons of different platforms and systems, making sure gamers of all types can explore the strategy game on any device they have on hand. Join over 10 million players already exploring the new content in a game that's secured the top spot in more than 10 regions since its global launch. And get ready for even more seasonal D&D drops in the upcoming seasons. Join D&D Legends and Dragonair using the link down below, and use the code on screen for a limited edition gift pack to jumpstart your journey. Quite the contrary, I've been Blaine Simple, and I'll see you all in the next video.